I want to shift gears and close with, because um, uh, I know that uh, uh, you're probably getting, uh, your throat's probably getting a little bit worse as we're going on here, but I, I don't want to let you leave uh, without, I, I, I want to ask you one more question about business, and then I want to get to the fun thing, okay? Okay. But uh, you and I had this discussion about uh, what is one of the most important mistakes that investors make today? And, and what is it that you feel that you have an ability to do to counteract that? Uh, Tell us about that. Well, I, I would limit it a little bit to the Czech Republic. I think it's, uh, it's uh, uh, an issue um, due to the to the history that we discussed of how the, 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 uh, in the Czech Republic the business elites have, were created and what, what their history is. Uh, but uh, I think that the biggest pe uh, mistake people here make is that uh, they take business personally. They uh, are unable to separate from their personal emotions, uh, uh, desires, goals, objectives and the business at hand. And uh, mixing the two, I think, makes it much more difficult for one to be successful than, than uh, if uh, you were able to separate the two. And I think that I can very clearly separate the two. How did you learn that, though? I've, I've always had it. I didn't learn it. Not, not even consciously. I, I think it's important when you have, a, when you have any sort of a, a problem that you are looking for a solution to, is to be able to deal with facts with the facts of the issue on the table and not with emotions that, that may surround Well, it. this goes back then to your comment uh, that uh, I uh, understand money. Because I think what I'm hearing you say then is that money is basically uh, a commodity. You know, you have so much here, you can do so much with it. And if you don't keep the emotions out of it, you find yourself uh, making flawed yes. decisions. Yes. Is that a fair? Yes. Yes. Ma money is a command. Well, to somebody who's who's uh, uh, running around scraping a living, money is not a commodity. But uh, I think that uh, um, in the in the world of investments that we are talking about, yes, money is exactly that, just a tool and a unit of measurement. Okay. Now. And one has to be completely uh, dispassionate about it. Before we get to a passion of yours in the fun category, which is your cycling team, I want to ask you about your goats. Uh, and you know, <laughs> and I have to tell you something, I know something about goats. <laughs> I had a goat when I was a kid. I was okay. raised on a farm, you know, so I want you to know I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I asked you why Goats. You, yeah, why <laughs> you have goats. And what did you tell me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you said, because I couldn't find any good yes, goat yes. cheese. But see, but, Sanjeev over there uh, remembers way back in the early 90s, there were no, rest no restaurants that uh, the expat community could go to eat, so we had to set up a chain of restaurants to feed everybody. You know, later on it became clear that there is no good goat cheese in the Czech Republic, <laughs> so we had to <laughs> set up a goat farm, and today we make excellent goat cheese. Excellent. And where do you sell it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you eat, you eat the goat I, cheese. I have to ask to get it. We have uh, to find out. We have uh, to find but, out. But uh, it's probably in very limited quantities. Uh, uh, I'm sure the friends and family are, are first in line. And I think the gentleman who operates the farm uh, goes to the uh, farmer's markets in Prague. And the name of the, of the cheese is Krasolesi. It mm -hmm. comes from a, town, from a little village called Krasolesi. So if you come across it, it's truly an exceptional product. I think we're going to see a spike in sales. <laughs> As a matter of <laughs> Sanji should put it on the, you should put it on the menu. I don't yeah. understand how come uh, it's not on the menu. I think we're going to see a spike in sales <laughs> here. All right. You live in a, I mean, your home base is a, uh, a village outside of uh, Geneva. A town. A town uh, outside of Geneva. And... Uh, 
you told me once, you know, there's something this town is missing, and it started another business for you. Tell us about that. Well, it happens to be a beautiful historic town with a little castle and uh, everything, and the town doesn't have a brewery. Uh, and all of you know that a small, beautiful, historic town without a brewery is, being is, checked, is incomplete. Yeah, that's right. And therefore, action had to be taken immediately <laughs> to rectify that. And uh, so I met with the mayor, who would love to have a brewery. I have a friend in Belgium who runs a small family brewery, so he, he will come in, become a partner. And uh, but what's in your about two years' this? time, your I will be it? a brewer. Well, but what are you going to be brewing? I mean, what type of beer and what is your market going to be? Or do you even care about that at the moment? Uh, I leave it up to the people who are putting <laughs> together the business plan. But the beer will be good. <laughs> uh, it will be a light lager, if possible. And um, So uh, far, I'm a customer. And Sanjeev will have to carry it in the restaurants, right? <laughs> I think we'll, we'll look for sales on that. All right, let's get to the thing that's your passion, and that's the cycling team. Tell, tell us how that came about. Tell us what, what it is, where it is, and what's going on with it. I enjoy getting on my, on my bike and, and cycling. Um, I have uh, uh, been to a few cycling races and found the atmosphere to be so electric and... and uh, uh, inspiring that I thought maybe some sort of an involvement in the sport would make sense. Um, at some point in time, through a common friend, I came across the uh, Quick Step cycling team, which happens to be a Belgian national institution. Belgium is the only country in the world where cycling is more popular than football. And uh, this team it happens to be a Belgian national institution. The team was losing its its sponsors and therefore in danger of maybe having to fold as has happened to some good teams recently uh, so I decided to buy and sponsor the team and when I was a little boy I was always watching Eddie Merckx uh, or heard in the news that Eddie Merckx has won yet another race and uh, Eddie Merckx himself has become a member of our board and, is, and, and has become a good friend of For the people who don't know who he is, who is he? Everybody knows who Eddie Merckx is. Is there anybody in this room it's who impossible. doesn't know who Eddie Merckx is? <laughs> Eddie Merckx is the greatest cyclist of the history of, in the history of the sport. Even better than... <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Merckx, unlike some others, didn't have a, a, you know, a van full of doctors who were we didn't, uh, we doing didn't mention, certain things. That yeah, we, we didn't mention any names. Uh, I want to thank you very much for, for coming today and spending some time with us and helping launch the, the second season of Cava Sepeption. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. And before we conclude, but did you want to say anything? No, no. Okay. Before we conclude, let me turn it over to the audience for a couple of questions. If anybody has a question they would like to ask, uh, now is the time. Um, hello again, uh, Thomas Mershon with Deloitte now. Uh, being a Colorado boy, I know of the Aspen Institute and uh, my friend's parents were uh, donors and, uh, and active in it um, uh, throughout the years. I also know that the Aspen Institute has many different areas. It covers everything from women in leadership to congressional committees and now is even helping Homeland Security for, for all I know. Uh, what are the main areas that you're hoping to bring here to the Czech Republic and, uh, and will that include any cultural and artistic? Yes, yes. Okay. We, will, we will take over as much as possible of the standard program of the seminars and uh, uh, then we will add individual events as they, um, uh, individual events that will be focused on matters that happen to be uh, topical at the time for the Czech Republic. So uh, I think that uh, the, the first event actually will be taking uh, place in, and I'm, maybe I'm not allowed to be saying that, so, so Feel free to we'll, forget what we'll I'm saying. It. Yeah, we'll but in early it. December, there, there probably will be the, the first event that will be related to the uh, idea of having a nuclear-free world, which I think is, for the Czech Republic especially, is a very topical issue. 
Absolutely. Sanjeev. He wants to ask me where, where to get the goat cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Zdenek, you've been, uh, you've been very fortunate to lead a very uh, rich life. Share with us, not on the professional level, but on a personal level, what are your two biggest learnings and what are the two things that you're most grateful for? <laughs> That's a very difficult yeah. question. That's pretty good. Um, you know, there are small things that you can be grateful for. For example, a nice uh, uh, piece of goat cheese from your own farm. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, early on, uh, and that's given, from, from, from the age of 19, I lived by myself. I had to rely on myself for everything I, I needed. I, um, um, uh, given that background and uh, my education, I just, uh, felt that it's okay to work 24 hours a day because you have to be here for the clients 24 mm -hmm. hours a day. And, uh, and uh, um, uh, I, of course, ended up neglecting my family and, uh, you, you know, all, the, all the, the history. And I think that I have, now that I have a new family with three lovely children, I have found out that the best, that's uh, the, unlike what I thought before, that time uh, should be and can be very, uh, "Quote unquote," profitably invested in in uh, one's family, so I think that's uh, that's probably the probably the most the most significant thing that I have learned over the last few years. And the grateful part? <sighs> Everything. You know, you can't. There isn't a single thing that uh, that one should be grateful for. I think it's just uh, the totality of all the experiences that one put together is the, the thing that one should be grateful for. And I am, reasonably speaking. And on that note, we will conclude what has been a very enjoyable uh, hour with uh, Zdeněk Bakala. And uh, please join me in thanking him for his time. Today. Thank you very much.